the Battle of Merville Gun Battery occurred on June 6, 1944, as part of Operation Tonga, part of the Normandy landings, during the Second World War. Allied intelligence believed the Merville gun battery was composed of heavy caliber guns that could threaten the British landings at Sword Beach, only eight miles away. The 9th Parachute Battalion, part of the 3rd Parachute Brigade attached to 6th Airborne Division, was given the objective of destroying the battery. However, when the battalion arrived over Normandy, their parachute descent was dispersed over a large area, so instead of over 600 men, only 150 with no heavy weapons or equipment arrived at the battalion assembly point. Regardless, they pressed their attack and succeeded in capturing the battery, only to discover that the guns were of a lower caliber than expected. However, these still had the range to hit targets on Sword Beach. Using what explosives they had been able to recover, the surviving 75 men tried to disable the guns. When the British paratroopers had withdrawn, two of the guns were put back into action by the Germans. Another attack the next day by British commandos failed to recapture the battery, which remained under German control until August 17, when the German army started to withdraw from the area. On June 6, 1944, the British 6th Airborne Division was given the task of securing the left flank of the Allied seaborne landings. One of their objectives was the destruction of the Merville gun battery. Allied planners had judged from the size of the concrete gun emplacements that the guns must be around 150 mm in caliber. If so, the guns would have a range of about 8 miles. At this distance, they could threaten the 3rd British Infantry Division's landing area, codenamed Sword, where they were due to land later that day. The unit assigned to destroy the battery was the 9th Parachute Battalion, part of the 3rd Parachute Brigade, commanded by Lieutenant Colonel Terence Otway. In April, 1944, the force was taken to Walbury Hill in Berkshire, where over seven days the Royal Engineers had built a full-scale replica of the battery, including obstacles and barbed wire fences. The following five days were spent holding briefings and getting acquainted with the layout of the battery. They carried out nine practice assaults, four of them at night. The assault had to be completed and the battalion clear of the position by 5 a.m. When the Royal Navy cruiser HMS Arethusa would open fire on the battery in an attempt to destroy it with naval gunfire, the Merville battery was composed of four six-foot thick steel reinforced concrete gun casemates. Each was designed to protect First World War vintage Czech 100mm guns. Other buildings on the site included a command bunker, a building to accommodate the men, and ammunition magazines. During a visit on March 6, 1944, to inspect the defenses, Field Marshal Erwin Rommel ordered the builders to work faster, and by May, 1944, the last two casemates were completed. The battery was defended by a 20mm anti-aircraft gun and several machine guns in 15-gun positions, all enclosed in an area surrounded by two barbed wire obstacles which also acted as the exterior border for a 100-yard deep minefield. Another obstacle was an anti-tank ditch covering any approach from the nearby coast. Just after midnight on June 6, the 9th Parachute Battalion's advance party landed with the brigade's pathfinders and reached the battalion assembly area without any problems. The Royal Air Force Lancaster bombers started their bombing run, which completely missed the battery, their bombs landing further to the south. The pathfinders in the meantime were having problems. Those who had arrived at the correct drop zone found their Eureka beacons had been damaged when they landed, and in the smoke and debris left over from the bombing, their marker lights could not be seen by the pilots of the transport aircraft. The main body of the 9th Parachute Battalion and their gliders were to land at drop zone V, located between the battery and Varville from 1 a.m. However, the battalion was scattered, with a number of paratroopers landing a considerable distance from the designated drop zone. Lieutenant Colonel Otway landed with the rest of his stick 400 yards away from the drop zone at a farmhouse being used as a command post by a German battalion. After a brief firefight, they helped other scattered paratroopers and reached the drop zone at 1.30 a.m. By 2.50 a.m., only 150 men had arrived at the battalion's assembly point with 20 Bangalore torpedoes and a machine gun. The mortars, anti-tank gun, mine detectors, jeeps, sappers and field ambulance section were all missing. Aware of the time constraints, Otway decided he could wait no longer, and the reduced battalion headed for the battery and joined up with Major Smith's reconnaissance party just outside the village. The reconnaissance party had cut away through the barbed wire, and marked four routes through the minefield. Otway divided his men into four assault groups, and settled down to await the arrival of the three gliders. In England, one of the gliders landed at RAF Odiham as its tow rope had snapped during bad weather. The other two gliders, unable to locate the battery, did not land where expected. On their run-in, both gliders were hit by anti-aircraft fire. One landed around two miles away, the other at the edge of the minefield. 
the troops from this glider became involved in a fire fight with German troops heading to reinforce the battery garrison. Otway launched the assault as soon as the first glider overshot the battery, ordering the explosives to be detonated to form two paths through the outer perimeter through which the paratroopers attacked. The defenders were alerted by the explosions, and opened fire, inflicting heavy casualties. Only four attackers survived to reach Casemate 4, which they disabled by firing into apertures and throwing grenades into air vents. The other casemates were cleared with fragmentation and white phosphorus grenades, as the crews had neglected to lock the doors leading into the battery. During the bombing raid, the battery's guns had been moved inside the casemates and the steel doors left open for ventilation. During the battle, 22 Germans were killed and a similar number made prisoners of war. The rest of the garrison escaped undetected by hiding in the underground bunkers, with the battery in their hands, but no sappers or explosives. The British gathered together what plastic explosives they had been issued for use with their gammon bombs to try to destroy the guns. Just before 5 a.m., the battalion's survivors, just 75 men of the 150 who had set out, left the battery and headed for their secondary objective, the village of La Plaine. The battalion, being too weak, only managed to liberate around half of the village, and had to await the arrival of the 1st Commando Brigade later in the day to complete its capture, after the British had withdrawn. The Germans reoccupied the battery position. Steiner was unable to see sword from his command bunker, so even though he was able to get two of his guns back in action, he was unable to direct accurate fire onto the landings. However, observers with the 736th Infantry Regiment were able to direct his guns until that position was neutralized. On June 7, the battery was assaulted again by two troops of commandos from No. 3 Commando, part of the 1st Special Service Brigade. The attack in daylight was repulsed with heavy losses to the commandos. As they withdrew, they were engaged by the battery's guns firing over open sights. The British never succeeded in completely destroying the battery, and it remained under German control until August 17, when the German army started to withdraw from France. If you're meant to lead, you have to learn what it's like to lose men. To have them die trusting you. And there's only one way to learn that lesson. The first time I did was on D Day. Alright, lads, listen up! We've got until dawn to achieve our objective. And it seems like the crowds already know we're coming. Now we've got one chance to demolish the coastal artillery. But if we don't, the invasion tomorrow will fail. Now I trained you all for this. Let's not let the Navy show us up. So take the case, mates. Blast the artillery. And fire your flares to let the Navy know the job's done. All right, this is it. You know the drill. Stand up! Hook in!
Don't shoot! Damn you, Kingsley. We pegged you as a crowd. Lucky we didn't fill you full of lead. Nice to see you, gents. Where do we stand? The captain didn't make it, so we're on our own now. I say we dig in and wait for the rest of the sick they born to assemble. Henry said we had till dawn to destroy the artillery. If we don't, the invasion fails. So you fancy yourself the captain now? Sunup's an hour away at best. There's no time for a sit-down. Yeah, there's also no muscle or no cavalry coming to save the bloody day. The only thing we can do here is to die or try not hey, to. you two scrapping over who's got the bigger bollocks ain't gonna solve nothing. Those German casemates aren't that far away. I think we can get to them in time. So I say we take them out. The company's scattered. We're pissing in the wind at this point. You know what's at stake. You all do. This is madness. Hey, we're beyond madness. Look, I'm with Arthur. We finished the mission. All right, Kingsley. Looks like you're in charge now. Casemates and Valhalla are that way. We should get moving. What's the plan, Kingsley? Let's get a path cleared. You heard the Sarge. Clear that debris. Are we going to pull this off? Now we can. I can't tackle the shoot. 
got free me before Jerry found us. Don't blame yourself. The whole operation was a mess from the off. Hey, Sav showed up right in the nick of time. Saved our skins, he did. Gain of our seat, more like it. Lucky <sighs> boy. Those lights on the cliff. That's the coastal defense battery. The bridge is well guarded and the bank's too steep. We secure the bridge then. It's our only move. You're the boss. Option, Sarge. At the fence. Take him out. On the mother truck. Uh, uh, fence is clear. Uh, All fire on the truck. Don't let them escape. They're falling back. Move up. Go, go, go. We'll go. Round. Suppress the half track, MG! Hitting the cover! Our team's lead! Keep them covered! Enemy infantry! Focus on that door! I got a beat on the door! Transport. Who remembers how to drive a blitz? I got this, son.
was a fucking kerfuffle. Hey, Sarge got it done. We're still here, aren't we? I suppose. Eight men standing against a Nazi gun fort. Richard said I'd gone mad. Sometimes, a little madness is called for. I think deep down he understood that, and realized we were cut from the same cloth. Sarge. Looks like Webb's ready to give you an update. Look at those defenses. Bloody hell. This way. They're waiting at the table up here. How's it looking, Sergeant? Best see for yourself. Let's get you the lay of the land. Our targets are the guns housed in those casemates. And we can only get there through a horde of Germans armed to the teeth. Think you can handle taking out the lower gun? I fancy my chances. That bunker's our way in, but it's packed with MGs. It'll be a hard push. First job's getting across that minefield. But that anti-tank ditch could be useful. I've got an idea. I'm all ears. We can punch a hole through the mines with those blitzers there. And the bunker will make minced meat out of us as soon as they hear the engines coming. We're going quiet then. No engines. Bail at the last second, let gravity do the work. That should get us to the ditch at least. Well? I love it. And I think you should go first. <laughs> all right then. As soon as you hit the ditch, get the men ready. Tommy, you with me? Oh, yeah. Drive through the minefield, take the bunker, strap some thermite to some highly explosive weapons. Piece of piss, Sarge. And you, get a second sun burning in the sky. If our ships don't see that flare, if they don't know we've won, they'll fire on the guns and risk taking us with them. Well, I don't know about you, but I think I'll take very little consolation in knowing that the fire that killed me was friendly. Don't worry, Gov. I won't forget to aim up. Godspeed, Kingsley. Get out there! Yes, Sarge! Get up, He's man! Gone. Time He's to just, move! He's just gone! Evans and Webb are in position, Sarge! Win on your orders! We're ready for orders, Kingsley! On my command! We charge! Charge! Go, go, go! Forward! Need 
to deal with that MG! Keep your head down, eh? Hush on! No escapes! Push it! Fight me, get your knife! Ready when you are, Sarge. Ready on the door, just waiting on you, boss. You take the lower case, mates. I'll take the upper ones. Don't forget the flare. Let's move up. Go, right, Sarge. All right, boys, this is it. You're on me. Tommy! Try to get back. We need to clear the door. All right, lads. Half of you. With me. That hot sack's tearing us up. Suppressive fire now. He's retreating! Take down the right half track! They're calling back! Keep pushing! Watch that half track! Move! Move! Target! Seven. Uh. 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 The 
eyes on that door! Watch the door! Crime scene together! Evans, take point! Got it, Sarge! Lights are out. I'll cover ahead while you find a torch, Sarge. Bloody hell, it stinks in here. Sarge, torch over here. Best grab it. <laughs> Bloody hell. Up ahead now. Look at that fucking monster. Never seen a 125 up close before. Let's blast the bastard, Sarge. One down, one to go. That's the last of the thermite. Sarge, I could use your help here. Webb did his part. The rest is up to us. Shit! Take cover! Smoke ready! Clear him out! Smoke up! Go! Case mate is clear! How are we blasting this one? We're out of thermite. I'll feed it to Bangalore. Let's get up top before this thing explodes! You have the flare, Sarge? Bombardment's close. Go! Get out and fire the flare! <laughs> Sergeant, the flare! Bombardment's any minute! Damn! Flare's ruptured! You gotta be fucking joking! Where's Webb? There! Lower case, mate! Incoming! Get down! I'm going for Webb's flare! Get everyone to cover! We need to run for it!
Where the hell have you been? Funny time to take a kip. I was just waiting for some mad bastard to come and save the day. Well, let's you and I signal our boys, shall we? soldiers under your command and hope that they can do the difficult thing the impossible thing that flare told me i'd been right this is what it means to be a leader